Welcome to Conversations with Sarah. I'm Sarah Redden, Therapeutic Coach of SRTT, and today I'm joined by Melanie Woods of Speaking Styles, who is a speaking coach empowering women to have a voice in the world. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I am really excited to sort of hear a bit more about you, what you do, um, very much like that message of empowering women to have a voice in the world, uh, because I feel it is really important. And I feel we're on, at a stage where women are finding their voice more and being much more vocal and um, feeling more able to speak. So if you're happy to, can you let me know a little bit about you and, and, and how you became a speaking coach? <laughs> Thank you. And I absolutely love this question. And I love sharing it because I didn't plan on any of it. I did not think 10 years ago, I think I'll be a speaker and I think I'll be a speaker coach. I think that sounds like it'd be a really good thing to do because I was petrified of public speaking. Oh, wow. There would be no way that I would ever have thought I would have been doing this. I had such a fear growing up of speaking. And I was in a generation, I'm sure maybe like yourself and maybe some listeners of being seen and not heard or not being seen or heard at all. So when you grow up in that, then when you become an adult, looking at your life, looking at things to do, put yourself out there. It's like, well, actually I can be seen, but I'm not allowed to be heard. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that comes in for a lot of people and particularly myself. But for me, I really came into this and I'm so passionate about helping women is around about just kind of 18, 19, 20 years ago, I was in a domestic violence marriage and I lost a lot of sense of myself. I lost my voice. And it was actually a co-worker of mine that stepped into my shoes and she asked me if I was okay one day. I was very good at hiding it mm -hmm. and very good at masking all of that that was happening. And she came over to me and asked me if I was okay. And in that moment, I knew that I had to use my voice and say no. And then from that moment on for an entire year, she literally stood beside me to help me to leave. And from then on, I really saw that by sharing, having a voice and sharing your story, you can actually save someone's life. She definitely saved my life in that moment. And she'd experienced what I had experienced. But then 10, 12 years later, I literally was so cynical about the world. Like I remember praying, saying like, if you get me out of this, I will work for the rest of my days helping other people. And then I did nothing for 12 years. I was so cynical. I hated the world, hated everything that had happened to me. And it wasn't until just over eight years ago, I'm originally from Scotland and I live in Australia. And just over eight years ago, I had an amazing opportunity to come to Australia for a year and I saw it as an opportunity to change, completely change my life, to get out of that being really cynical, but having a, a way of not being in my family anymore, but not being in the environment that I was in to, to leave all of that. I say to people, don't think you have to get your suitcase and come to the other side of the world because it still comes with you. I was quite surprised when I landed in Australia and went, the same person that was back home in Scotland is, is arrived in Australia and she's still yeah. here with all of the emotional baggage that's going on. <laughs> How did that happen? And I was given the book, The Secret by Rhonda Byrne, about six months before getting on the plane to come to Australia for a year. Now, just to imagine for everybody listening is that imagine a redheaded Scottish girl who's really super cynical. She's been in an abusive marriage. She's never been into any self-development or any spirituality whatsoever. And someone gives her the secret <laughs> and it says, oh, take responsibility for your life and everything that's happened in it. So I threw it back at the person that gave it to me and said, no way. I, yeah. I did not deserve that what happened to me. I didn't ask for it. And then she said, I want you to read it again with an open mind. I thought, well, I don't want to be closed minded. So I'm going to, I'm going to read it again. And then I read, then I watched the documentary and something in that moment absolutely changed my life forever. And I started to go, I am going to take responsibility for what happened and not put the blame all on one person. Mm -hmm. And I literally for six months read and watched so much about self-development and spirituality. And I came to Australia and I've been on that journey for the last eight years and completely changed my life. 
and started a business to help other people have a voice yeah. because I started to see it for myself that by what happened to me is that I want to be able to help other people and particularly women not necessarily have been in, in a similar situation as me but I think for a lot of women we've all had experiences in our life we've all had trauma on some level and it's now time to have a voice to make an impact and a ripple effect and really be able to help other people but doing it from a heart-centered place to help whether it's your co-worker whether it's your friend family member a client audiences it doesn't matter it's the fact that your message and story can actually help someone else in, in mm. their life um as well which I'm really passionate about yeah and it absolutely does it's um I mean I can relate to parts of your story um in that uh, there was a period of, of time for me that I very much lost touch with my own voice and mm -hmm. um didn't communicate my story and I'm still I think in a stage a state of kind of growth with that um and, and not not wanting to or not knowing really how to share my story in a way that is healing and helpful um but but still out there trying like before I did the podcast like it wasn't that I was a confident out like person that really thought oh I must get on YouTube and have a YouTube channel this is going to be the best thing ever um mm -hmm. it, it just sort of I, I needed to share these stories and I needed to to have conversations with people who could share this stuff out into the world and I'm noticing through the podcast guests coming on and speaking that it is having an impact people message in and say oh like I didn't know about this thing and it's help, mm -hmm. helped me kind of know that I can get in touch so being able to share your story is so important mm -hmm. but knowing where to start even as a professional myself it, it's not easy so where 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 do you so when you work with people where do you suggest starting what what's the where's the get going point and that's right and not everybody's comfortable to share like I say to people I didn't share my story for a good couple of years in my business I wasn't comfortable I wasn't ready to share and what I always say to people is is having a look at like your timeline of your life is a good place to start like getting a pen and a bit of paper drawing a line across and then putting an arch on the top and lines in the bottom and what you can do from there is the bottom one is like events and situations that have maybe challenged you have been obstacles and then the arch at the top is things that you're proud of like you're grateful for your successes things that you've done and then throughout that start to look at catalysts or events and things like that that have happened in your life and then really start to map it out and brainstorm and then think okay out of like this one over over in, in the left hand side am I comfortable to start sharing that with people mm -hmm. maybe that's sharing it with your friends like if you have a business is it maybe starting with clients and customers and just tapping in and sharing a little bit about yourself so similar to what we're doing here Sarah we're having a conversation is there ways of dropping in things that have happened to you if you're not ready to fully go hey here's my TED talk and I'm going to do my whole story <laughs> yeah, yeah. right um, I get when I work with people not everybody's ready to do that it's particularly the same with myself so I would say it's really just start mapping it out putting a timeline of your life is there parts where you could drop it into conversations to clients to customers to co-workers and just really start to get curious with certain things that have happened in your life that you could start sharing just dropping in to then building your story to when you're ready to be able to do that and if you are ready you're like you know what I'm comfortable doing it I just don't know how to do it but you've maybe got an audience or you've got a podcast is again just break it into bite size and sharing little bits at a time um, of your story um, or you could go in and do 15 20 minutes of, of your story it's really depending on your audience and who you're wanting to make an impact with as well but I say start small start really yeah. small and get comfortable because it can be quite overwhelming and maybe quite traumatic for some people when I, I teach people how to do storytelling and it can be quite quite confronting at the beginning when they do that because they're kind of going back into situations of their life 
but I get them to come out straight away. So it's like, here's the trenches, here's the obstacles, but we need to go, you've kind of done that. Let's start getting into the vision and what you've overcome, but it yeah. can be quite conflicting for people. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really aware that kind of one of my barriers that I needed to work with bef- before I started doing the podcast, because I do share and I, I do relate to like my own personal stuff, because when I listen to people, that's what's helpful to me. I needed to kind of get okay with um, how other people that have been involved in my story who may not like my representation of my experience, like how that was, how I felt about that and how that was going to be perceived and and how I was going to manage that. And I think that's something I'm I'm still, it's evolving, isn't it? It's that kind of thing. So like what other barriers do you think people may come across yeah definitely it is it's it's maybe people close to you I know for myself I was probably very hidden around when I started sharing my story I'd look at my social media and go who do I have back home that would see that oh okay we're going to just like do a custom tailoring to who gets to see that things like that until I was comfortable to do it barriers can be people feeling imposter People feeling like, oh, why? Who would want to listen to my story? Like how many other people's stories are already out there already? So imposter can definitely be the barrier. The fear around how will it come across? Mm -hmm. So the fear of failure, rejection, humiliation, all of those things are big, massive barriers to being vulnerable to then will people then say say you're you're in the coaching profession people then kind of go well I don't want to look like I've had anything like that happen to me and I don't want people to think if I get vulnerable I'm not good at what I do yeah so that becomes a barrier that people think that they want to stay separate which I get that to a point there's still a way to be vulnerable and share but still be able to see yourself as the authority in what you're Mm -hmm. doing So the barrier becomes that I say is the barrier is all in your own head. It's not actually real. So it's Mm -hmm. like saying, what's the worst case scenario for me sharing this, that I help one person, but maybe five other people don't agree with my story, but I've helped one person. And that's the most important thing. So the barrier is really looking at what's maybe holding you back from doing it. And really what's the worst case scenario that could happen out of sharing your story as well. Yeah, and it was really interesting for me because my my core training is as a person centered counselor. So the whole way through your training, you're you're taught not to disclose. You're taught not mm. to share these things in session. Um, and yeah. of course, you know you don't you don't share these things in session. But the flip side of that is there's there's lots of parts of my life now that are out on social media. And should you binge <laughs> all of my content, you probably would know a lot more about me than. The, pe- the people that are in my day-to-day life because it is just things that come up as we're having conversations so I think that was really interesting for me like as my my professional training was like no this yes. isn't ethical there's something kind of not okay with that but then also like there's a real pull and I think it's so important like, that we are sharing these stories and we are sharing our experience and we are saying you know yeah like i I've been through this stuff and this is how I navigated through and like you say if that helps to me if that helps one other person have some hope um Mm. pick up some kind of strategy that might help or you know just that kind of yeah hope for me is the biggest word being able to feel that okay other people have experienced this and that there is ways that could help me yeah definitely and the biggest thing by sharing is that you're not alone and the other person hearing it then goes oh wow like I'm not alone either it's the biggest perception that we all have is that we think particularly if we're looking on social media like everybody has amazing lives Mm -hmm. no one's ever felt like I have and that's the biggest thing is you can help one person but you show people what's possible, you give them hope and you give them permission to do the same so when we can share a story and be vulnerable it actually gives permission for the other person to do it every time we don't share something about ourselves then we hold the other person back from doing the same love that I love that because I'm aware that um because of how I communicate in my podcast and stuff that I do often go off and reflect and think 
you know, have I have I shared too much? Have I related too much to myself? Are people going to think that it's it is all of those things that we've talked about? You know, will people think, oh, it's just so self indulgent? And it is to a degree, it is. But that's why I do it. It is a conversation. I learn so much by having these interactions with people so in my mind if I'm learning and and I'm in this field I'm in this profession and I'm learning things people who don't have my training and don't have my background it's it's allowing opportunity um and I think that for me is the biggest thing about communication conversation is that it's an opportunity to learn about the person that you're having a conversation with, but also yourself and your 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 internal world, the 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 way in which you relate to the world and the things that are going on around you, and it is so important to be able to have these conversations. But, yeah. but where do we start if we've never had these conversations? <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that's the thing I talk about a lot like today I was talking about conscious communication with my community and over the time that I've done this work it is that thing of like where do I start but it's also about we actually have to start on learning the way in which we speak so we've all grown up went to school things like that but we've never actually been taught how to have a very human to human conversation So I love to talk about conscious communication and it's a way of we unlearn the way in which we have been brought up to speak. So I say to people, think about if you had to go and sit your driver's license again, just say, you know, like tomorrow they're bringing in the girl up, like, you know, and you've been driving for some amount of years. I know I can hold my hand up and say, no way, because we've picked up bad habits, but we've also become um, conscious in we will become un- un- unconscious with the way in which we drive our car because we've been doing it for years so we're in the program of driving our car so we're unconscious but we're competent right mm. so then we picked up all of these bad habits and patterns in our car and driving because we can do it without thinking so again we've done a lot about that around communication but does it really serve us though in our communication conversations so I say it's about starting off unlearning the way in which you were taught how to how to have conversations with people, which tends to be to be seen and not heard or find out more about the other person and you don't share anything. Yeah, as you're talking, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking to listen and to be interested in what they have to say and not overshare not I mean I was one of these kids the whole way through school like my school reports is talks too much like I've always been curious about people and what makes them tick and asking what would be deemed as inappropriate questions (laughs) (laughs) I love it and so when we start to notice okay what's the what's the habits or the patterns that we have when we speak or not do because again staying silent it is just Mm -hmm. exactly the same as oversharing it you know we've got to find the balance so if we can look at the things if you next time you're in a car think about all the things that you keep doing that you know that you probably shouldn't do but you do where it's a little bit of speeding or you kind of change lanes and don't indicate or don't look at all the mirrors like start to catch yourself and think okay when I'm having conversations with people what do I need to change what do I need to let go of to be present so become conscious means that become present really listen to the person don't think about what your next response is going Mm. to be just be present to listen and then take a pause to go okay now it's my turn I'm going to have some time to think about the next thing to say so really about it all I say is brevity is beautiful so brevity is a big thing what I, I I speak to people on because we want to keep it short but we want to have the conversation so when we are then speaking with smaller chunks to then allowing then the other person to come back and ask a question, respond. And that becomes a two-way conversation. And you can have more of a deeper conversation around those things. So it's unlearning the things that you've learned that don't serve you, and then become present and conscious within the conversation that you're having to be fully centered and focused. Mm. I think one of the things for me as well, one of the things I've realized is that not everybody is your people to be having these conversations yes. with. Pick your pick your audience, pick your connections, pick you know who yeah, the, I mean I use the word vibe a lot and it very much for me is like not we have lots of superficial yes. communication 
because we have to and we have to do these things but the for, for me the people that you like when I work with my clients and we talk about communication and communicating boundaries and that sort of thing it's like being aware of who your audience is and who you're talking to and and what you need to communicate with those people it's different isn't it our levels of communication that we have Yes, and, and it's something that we have to be adaptable to because we're dealing with humans and every human is different. So, you know, I say like we're, we're, we're plants, like plants are just complicated humans as well. So mm. it's having to really, and that's about being conscious because when we become conscious, we can then be flexible with the way in which we are then communicating with someone. And that's what's so important to be present and not think, okay, the way in which I spoke to this person yesterday, oh, I can just rinse and repeat and do that today. Well, that might not work with that person because they're a different personality type. They're a different mm. learning and they different process all of those things. So it's really becoming present in picking up those cues Again, when you can be present and listen, you can pick up the cues, you can pick up maybe facial expressions and different things like that to pick up and go, okay, this is not going to work today. I'm going to have to get something else out of my back pocket and go, mm -hmm. okay, today's communication style and tactic is this. Yeah. <laughs> Having to, it, it is a constant changing that up and being okay with being able to do that as well. So people... What type of people do you work with, with this, with the way in which you help people with communication? Who, who are you, who are you aimed at? Who, who comes to you for your support? So business owners and entrepreneurs, particularly women. So maybe it's like life coaches. Um, I have a lot of healing people that come as well. I, I find a lot of people that are in an industry that's around intuitive modalities, life coaching, it's really so heart centered and they want to help people, but they don't want to put themselves out there, but they want to help more people. Yeah. So it's about finding that balance with being able to put yourself out there, but still being aligned to your values and your intuition. So those people, and then I help managers and leaders and in, in, in business owners, like in, in companies to be able to, grow their confidence around speaking to their teams. So I find that a lot of people end up accidental managers and leaders, yeah. and then yeah. suddenly they're maybe having to present or they're having to deal with difficult conversations and deal with different personalities. So I then help them to be able to have more confidence to have difficult conversations, not get really worried and concerned about those things. And, and yet yeah, in business owners or entrepreneurs, really being able to help them help more people mm. and really step it, into who they are yeah it makes such a difference I mean I find that with with my clients on the personal level it's we're as a society we're so afraid or I think we are so afraid of these difficult conversations yes. um that we're being somehow confrontational by expressing a need or yeah. reinforcing a boundary or you know just saying that you're not that this something isn't okay or even like yeah. down to complaining in a shop to be, just yeah. be able to do it in a way that is like this is it this is just how it is it doesn't have to be this big thing um yeah. and it is I find people find having these conversations or the thought of having the conversations <laughs> is so scary um like you say because we kind of we we don't learn it we are told yeah. to be quiet or keep the peace yeah. or just kind of rub along or they be passive aggressive sarcastic um and yeah. in my world clear communication of needs just makes such a difference doesn't it so as a manager being able to kind of step out of your ego express exactly what you need from your staff to me makes so much more sense and yeah. it must make such a difference in the workplace oh massively in in the people because it's going into the unknown if you know that you need to go into some sort of conflict or say something to a team member that you've just thought oh i'm going to avoid and hopefully it will go away it's never going to happen and people don't know it's the unknown because they don't know what the person will say or do and yeah. then they don't know what to say and do yeah. and that's the biggest thing that I mean I help people and I do have templates and yeah. scripts to help them plan and prepare and know how to respond in, in those situations and then afterwards they're like I don't even know why I got so worried about it but again it's when you know and you have something 
down in pen and paper that you can take as notes to help you guide you through those conversations yeah. that it's never it's never as scary and people end up with commanding respect setting boundaries and then they don't have those things happen again and they can go into that conversation again absolutely with no problems after yeah. after that as well um but it's it's such an an, un, an unknown territory for so many people um and it's it, it is scary in particular in a workplace they're scared that maybe the member of staff will then complain about them and it ends up like it's the whole big thing the worst case scenario that's and none of it's ever going to happen it's fear of the fear isn't it really like you say it's the yeah. fear of the unknown and it's not wanting to get into that messy space but yeah I mean, just those little tweaks those having that confidence in your own ability makes such a difference and clear communication really does make so much of a, of a change in the way in which we connect with each other and it, yeah. it I'm, I'm thinking of places that I've worked and and how my experience has been the 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 better the communication to me of what the expectations were what my boundaries are within the workspace made it so much less stressful because you, you know what you can do you know if you do something wrong what the consequence is going to be um and there isn't all that worry that oh like it, so it's I think like from 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 my point of view that the clearer we can be with this level of communication whether it be professionally personally just makes life so much easier absolutely it is and and yeah it, it, it's and I say to people it's it's personally and professionally even though I teach people how to do these things I say then a lot of a lot of my clients then say like I've become a better mother because of they're setting the boundaries with maybe clients, their business and, and teams. And then they're like, oh, I'm going to try this out with, you know, my kids at home. And I'm like, go for it, you know, or maybe partners and things as much as I say, well, that's that, that's not something that I deal with, but feel free to use yeah. any of it over there. Let me know how you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is what I deal with and it does make a difference. It's yes. like once you start kind of getting that clear communication, because of course, if you're in a healthy relationship, yeah. if you're clearly communicating uh, on an adult level, then it invites clear communication back. And it yes. really does evolve the relationship, um, the intimacy, the connection. Um, and, and I'm sure that's what you experience with, maybe you'd mm. use different words, but that's what yeah. you experience with, with your clients and your work. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, as anything, communication is all around. We're dealing with people all the time. So if you can master in one area, you're going to master them all because you've got the confidence to be able to do it in one area. You can then come over here and do it in another area. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's clear. It's getting clear and getting that clarity and confidence with everyday communication. Because that's what I say. We're having conversations with everyday people every single day, no matter yeah. life yeah. or business or profession. So how do people connect with you to work with you if, if they're thinking, yeah, actually, this would be really useful for me? Who do they need to be and how do they get hold of you? Yeah, so you can go to my website and that's um, speakingstyles.com.au. You can book in for a free call just to have a chat as well, which I find really, really helpful because then we can see what sort of areas you're looking for. But again, just see if we're a fit together as well. Um, or Speaking Styles on Facebook is a really good one to follow as well if you're looking for some values and tips and things like that to help mm -hmm. you get started as well. Perfect. Um, and we are pretty much, I think, at, at the end of time um, because I have not paid attention because I've been so busy listening to you. I'm not entirely sure how long we've been talking. Um, so if you're, if you're okay with us finishing now, is there anything you want to leave people listening with? I'd love to say is that wherever you go, go with all your heart and and really align with your own values so go with your heart align with your values and really go out there and make an impact and ripple effect of who you are and who you want to become love that thank you so much thank you for sharing thank and you. thank you for coming on and speaking with me thank you so much for having me sarah thank you thank you to those that have listened i really hope you've enjoyed today's episode to find out more about me my guests and to give us feedback and suggestions visit srtt.co.uk and follow us at srtt podcast on social media i'll be back next wednesday with a new guest until then stay curious and be kind to yourself